What's up? This is Kong from xfaders.com and I'm back with another video. In this video is a continuation of the xfaders OCS, which is organize, clean up and store your music collection using tag scanner. Now, if you haven't had an opportunity to look at the first video, please check it out. It'll be listed above um, and also down in the description. But in this video, we'll focus a little bit more on tag scanner and how to manipulate your uh, ID tags, as well as organize your music and clean it up a little bit better. Let's start off by clicking the rename tab at the top. We're going to focus on the Simpsons album to begin with in this tutorial, and we're going to clean up the file names because of course, the only thing that you're seeing on the file names is the name of the track. So to get started, if you go to file name patterns, all of those right below are options that you can choose from to populate the file name. So I like to use artist followed by the title. And what this does is give you a preview of what the new file name is going to be. In this section, you also have the option to uh, reorganize the files. So whether it be moving them or copying them to a different location, you do have the ability to do so. Also, if you would like to add the track number to the file name, just simply click on it and just add a space and hyphen followed by another space to add it to the track name or the, I'm sorry, the file name. And as you can see here, this will be the new file name. Now, once you're satisfied with it, you can also preview. And if everything looks good, you can go back and select all the files to apply to each one of them. Once you finish that, you can go ahead and click on the edit tab at the top. This will bring up a new view and windows set of windows for you. So in this view, you have the opportunity to browse some folder. Um, what this allows you to do is just choose one of the folders that has your contents, your musical content. And also too, you can refresh that folder if you've made any changes and right next to it is you can allow it to search subfolders as well. So in this current view, I have all of those files um, available to me in that folder. The next option is to add a folder followed by the undo button. Uh, the next button will allow you to select all as well as to cancel the selection or we'll clear it. The up and down buttons or the up and down arrows will allow you to adjust the order in which the files are. So let's say I have one of the um, songs in the incorrect order, I can use those to drop it down or bring it back up. The next option is to group by. This allows us to see the um, artists or the album and just basically group them together by common uh, information. The next one is the sort from A to Z. So that can include all of those available options. The filter file list is very important as well too. When you click on it, it'll open a window at the bottom. This will allow you to search for files um, using a file uh, name or something from that file song. Also too, you can select whether it's case sensitive or whole match, or if you're using uh, regular expression. This will allow you to search through uh, categories. So if you select one, it'll just look in that area. So for right now, it's set to all, to cover down on all options. Now, one of the most important things is to find duplicates. Um, in here, you can basically select any of the placeholders to look for duplicates. I like to use the title or the um, song uh, length in seconds. So for this example, we're gonna use a title. Uh, as you can see here, there are quite a few duplicates and we can literally right click and just remove any of them. At the very bottom, you notice that there's a variation between the two where it is a uh, uh, two different edits of the same file. So of course those would be a, a false positive. Now going back inside of uh, duplicates, you can go in and do the length uh, based off of uh, seconds. So what this does for you is give you a list of the songs and the amount of time they are in seconds. You'll have quite a bit more information to scroll through, but the duplicates will stand out like a sore thumb, especially when you get down here in like the, the 160s. Um, as you can see here, it shows the same duplicates that we found before. And moving right along, the next button will be transformation. That is the window that appears in the top right corner. We'll explain that a little bit more in detail a little bit later. Um, but for now, I just want to make you familiar where that button button's located. So now the next button is to clear out the, the tag information. After that is renamed the folder. So if I wanted to rename the whole folder that the songs uh, reside in, I can change that very quickly. So for example, like the Bart Simpson um, or the Simpsons album, I can change that name and base it off of the placeholders as well. 
The next option is the format values from other fields, followed by the uh, ability to save those playlists. So if you wanted to create a playlist to select all files, or if you just want to select uh, individual files, you can create playlists from those uh, selected. The next option on the list is for the auto numbering. So if you select a few files, you can, um, especially if it's an album, you can select the starting value and, um, and allow it to auto number those items as well as this. The next three buttons are actually related to each other. So the first one is the import cover art. Second one is to export that art. And the third is to set the dimensions of the cover art. So you can hit the drop down and make changes here as well. Um, you have the option to recompress and override. To better describe or explain this topic, I downloaded the Simpsons cover art for the album. So right now I'm just adding it to the Tag Scanner software to apply it to those songs. So once it's been uploaded, the file um, dimensions is 718 by 720. So by clicking save, it will apply it to all the uh, tracks over here on the left. But also too, when you go over here to the right, it has changed the dimensions over to uh, 499 by 500, which is exactly what it's been set to at the top. The next option is to import lyrics if you have any, but you can also just copy and paste the lyrics there under this section to the right. The next option is the track. So this gives you the opportunity to change the way the track is represented, whether it's a zero, one for the first song or just one. And I'm just toggling through the settings now, just so you can see. And the settings for the disc is the same way. It's pretty much set up the same way where you can change it from a zero, one or one, zero. Doesn't really matter. Switching back over to the window in the bottom right, uh, one of the advantages to Tag Scanner is it allows you to make bulk changes very easily. And not to mention, you can actually just preview them before you finalize any changes. So for the Simpsons album, there's a few values that, that will stay the same each time. So for example, it will be the album along with the year and the genre. So by changing those or, or making them to something specific, let's say you just want to change it to Simpsons, you can do that and it will change it for all of the uh, tracks in that list. Before we go any further, I want to jump up to the program options. There's a few things in there that I need to explain before we move further into this tutorial. So by clicking the program options at the top, you have the option for general which you can go in and change the theme to standard or dark. And this is just an example. The next option that I feel is important is for when you open up the software, it will pick up where you last left off. And also too, when you make changes to a file, once you hit save, it'll move on to the next one. Under the tag section, I would probably suggest leaving it to ID3 version 2.3, just for compatibility reasons. Uh, you may come across some, some, some software that doesn't work well with the 2.4. So you can also make changes to the embedded covers. So what we were just discussing a minute ago, you can change that uh, manually. Transformations is the next important thing that I wanna discuss. So starting with the change case, um, looking through it, you can set that to whatever you want there. So it'll apply to all fields, but when you hit the drop down, it will explain that either you want it lowercase, uppercase, or first letter capitalized. I normally like that setting to begin with. Standard file use is pretty much straightforward. It applies to all fields. It does not change the case, but what it does do is when you have a DJ, capital D, lower J, it will automatically switch it over to capital D and J. Same thing with underscores, it will replace it with a space and so on and so forth. There's plenty of options here and you can add to it if you see fit. But what we're gonna do is create a brand new uh, template. And the purpose of this template is to remove the parentheses on any of the track lessons. So sometimes it, it may be needed, but sometimes you, it's just unnecessary to have parentheses there. So what we'll do is set the field to all, uh, format value blank. Uh, we'll set it to keep the case that's already there, but we'll add a new value and the original value will be the, the left open parentheses and we'll just replace that with a blank. 
um, whole words and case sensitive and all that stuff does not apply. So we'll duplicate that and change the parentheses over to the closed right hand one. So anytime that it sees any of those values, it'll just replace it with, with an empty value. The next one is we'll take a look at the uh, short instrumental and acapella. This is one that I manually created as well. Same rules apply. Um, you'll see I accidentally made it to capitalize each word, but what ends up happening here is if you have the word instrumental, it will shorten it to I-N-S-T-R. Same thing for acapella. Um, it will change it over to just a cap. Moving along to the genre, the first option that we have is acapella. Now I want to take a minute and give you a fun X fact. The Italian spelling of this word is two separate words with two P's in, as in Papa and two L's as in Lima. The Latin version is still two separate words, but it only includes one P, which is similar to what we're used to, which is A-C-A-P-E-L-L-A. -L -L -A. So as one word technically is incorrect, but as far as tagging my music, I prefer just to see it as one word. So as you can see here at the bottom under custom genres, I went ahead and added my version. And to finish up in the program options here, you'll see the networking tab as well as the about tab. Here you'll find the developer's email address and homepage and a few additional information. Now, if you really like the software so far or had an opportunity to use it, consider donating. Um, I'm not sponsored by or affiliated with Tag Scanner, but I definitely think they did a great job and, and it's worth donating if you find this software useful. This tutorial has went on kind of long, so I would like to break it up into two sections. So hang in there with me. I plan on finishing up with the Tag Scanner, which is the organized section of this tutorial altogether. But I can't wait to start the storage section, and I'm pretty sure you'll find something helpful in there. With all that being said, I would like to thank you for checking out this video. Please like, share, and subscribe, and check us out on the website at www.xfaders.com.